Good morning. Welcome to Church Online. I'm so glad that you've chosen to spend your Sunday here with us at Station Church. Let's worship together this morning. Hey, everybody. Welcome to church. Come on, let's stand and worship together. Here we go. Sing majesty, majesty, majesty. You are the king of majesty, majesty, majesty. You are the king of majesty. Jesus, King of God. 
If you are just joining us this morning, welcome. If you're new to Station Church, we would love an opportunity to connect with you. Please take a moment and fill out our digital connect card, and you can find that pinned in the comments below this video, or you can visit our website at www.station.church forward slash I'm new. Uh, we have some exciting news. Today is our very last Sunday online only. Next Sunday, we will meet in person at 1030 a.m. at Station Church. And you'll notice many changes that we've made throughout our building with your safety in mind. We've installed touchless hand sanitizer stations. We've installed new signage uh, with reminders of social distancing protocols. And we've rearranged our sanctuary so that you can safely participate in our Sunday experience. I just want to remind you to arrive a few minutes early so that we can get you registered and checked into service and safely seated in our sanctuary. And if you're not ready to join us in person, no problem. You can still join us online at 1030 a.m. In March, when we had our very first service online, we committed to keeping you up to date on how we're doing financially here at Station Church. In the last three months, I'm excited to announce that our incoming tithe has increased. Our missions giving has increased. And three weeks ago, we took our largest single missions offering ever. You might be asking this morning, Brittany, how does that happen in these times? And I want to tell you, it's not one person giving a lot of money. Instead, it's everyone, all of us collectively, recognizing that God is still faithful and that he keeps his promises. And so we choose to trust and obey. The first three verses of the 26th Psalm say this, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. You can give online today at www.station.church forward slash give. I want to pray for you. God, I thank you for your faithfulness, that God, as we trust you and we obey you and we give back to you what is already yours, God, that you give the increase. So God, today as we give, God, I pray that we give uh, out of joy, thanking you for your goodness, for everything that you have done. God, for using what may seem like an impossible season, God, to do some incredible things. And we're so thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's Pastor Joel with this morning's message. Hey, good morning, Station Church. Pastor Joel here. So excited to be with you this morning. And one of the things that I don't understand, well, I guess there's a lot of things that I don't understand. I don't understand why. Why is there an expiration date on sour cream? Because the longer it goes, it isn't just the more sour it gets? Or why do feet smell and noses run? Or why do mosquitoes like that one person better than all the rest? Because I've gone hiking and I've been that one person that had a thousand mosquito bites and my brother would get nothing. Why do people say heads up when they want you to duck? Or why do we call tuna tuna fish, but chicken is never called chicken bird? And you say, Pastor Joel, okay, getting a little off track here. But one of the things I don't understand is how memory works. You learn something, a song, a formula, maybe a scripture, then you don't think about it for years, sometimes even decades, but when something triggers it, it immediately comes back to mind. Like for me, it happens with songs. You can ask my wife, Brittany, my life is all about singing. It happens to you as well, and I can show you and I can prove it because if I start singing, my baloney has a first name, it's, you're going to say O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name. It's, yeah, we were raised by that. Or if I say, um, give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Or like a good neighbor, Stay Farm is there. Or how about this one? All right, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say the second part. You are going to type it into the chat. Ready? 
The best part of waking up is type it in because my wife is probably drinking it this morning right now or frosted flakes are more than good there. Great. Uh, everybody remembers Tony to the tiger, but I'm not sure if it's because of repetition or an attachment to a significant event, but something just sticks with you. The promise we're going to look at today is one of those verses. A scripture that you've probably learned when you were young or, or maybe when you were a teenager and just have forgotten until you really needed it. The promise we're going to read today is in Isaiah 41, 10, and it says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, Isaiah chapter 41 was written to the Israelites while they were captive in Babylon. It was a difficult, challenging time with uncertain future. The people were, were dealing with fear and doubt, and many of them turned to idol worship, worshiping false gods, gods of their captors. As they bowed down and offered sacrifices, their idol worship resembled worship to God. They were doing the right thing but in the wrong direction. Isaiah, he confronts the idol worshipers and their sin. He then gave comfort and assurance to those who worship the one true God. And he reminded them, idols are powerless. They can't help you. They can't save you. But God, our true God, is faithful and just. You probably aren't bowing down to a statue at your home, but anything that takes priority over God and his kingdom has the potential to become an idol. It could be money. It could be sports. It could be free time or work. And yes, it could even be your spouse or your children. People have lots of idols. If there is a positive side to the coronavirus crisis, it's that people are learning that those things that they held dear don't always bring them comfort. They don't bring hope. They don't bring peace. They don't bring strength. They are here today and gone tomorrow, but God is constant and he's dependable and he's powerful. We're going to pick it up in Isaiah uh, verse 8. But you, O Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, your descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its furthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. See, God chose them. They didn't do anything to earn his choosing. In fact, they earned his rejection and God still showed them mercy. Today, I want to tell you that God has chosen you. Him choosing you makes you special. You are not a loser. You are chosen by God. You are not a reject. Regardless of how people treat you, you are God's choice. He selected you. He handpicked you. You are unique and you are important to God. He loves you and he chose you. Even though you have failed, God still chooses you. God has chosen you. Now that forces a decision. What do you choose? What priority will God have in your life? Will you respond to his love or will you reject him? If you've rejected or walked away from God, I want you to know it's not too late. It's never too late. He still chooses you even today, right now. He still loves you. And I challenge you today to choose him. Now, because you've been chosen by God, you have a promise. So since you've been chosen, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. Today, I want to walk through that promise with you step by step, starting right in the beginning. So do not fear. At the beginning of the battle, in the middle, and even when you've been fighting the battle for a long time, you face fear. You lost your job or you have an unexpected medical expense or your sales go down or you lost a scholarship. 
you get a tough report from the doctor and you're called into a meeting, your normal first reaction is fear. What are they going to say? What am I going to do? Or how am I going to pay for this? Or what's going to happen to me? You don't know what's next and you don't know the answer. It's frightening. Fear is often accompanied by what if type of questions. And there's no reason to fear if you have the answer or know what to do, right? The greatest fear is not knowing, not knowing what will happen or not knowing if you will survive, not knowing when or if the end will ever come, right? The unexpected bill causes no fear if you have money in the bank or if you have a huge savings account and your business and sales are down, right? There's no fear because you have something behind you. If the court case is frivolous and you've got the best lawyer in town, right? There's no fear. You know you're going to win. If the critics are well known for always criticizing others, if they have no influence and people disregard their words, guess what? There's no problem. Everybody's behind you. There's no fear when you know the answer. Fear comes when you don't have the answers, when you feel alone and overwhelmed. You know, some of the greatest fear moments of my life uh, happened right in the beginning of our marriage. It was year number one for us. Brittany and I just got married in July, and I was working a really great job in a warehouse, driving Fort Truck. Um, health insurance was great. The pay was great. The vacation time was great, and everything was lined up and working perfectly. And it was Christmas Eve, and I was called into work, and I was only working for a few hours. I picked up three guys on the way because uh, they were on my way and they needed a ride and I was helping them out and I got called into the office and they were letting me go. Instantly in that moment, like I'm a newlywed, what am I going to tell my wife? How are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to pay the rent? What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? What about the health insurance? And everything's just flooding your mind and your heart is just like beating out of your chest. And the hardest part was calling my wife and saying, hey, I'm on my way home. And she was so excited because it was Christmas Eve and she could spend some time with her, her love. I had to tell her, no, I just lost my job. Those were some of the scariest moments. And it didn't just happen once to me. It happened to me about five years ago. I was making $60,000 a year and we just bought a house and we just put solar panels on. We just bought two new cars and we were... We were doing well. We just had two, uh, two kids and our third one was on the way. I lost my job. It was terrifying. But I'm here today. I survived. Why? Because God is victorious. He is holding me up in his righteous right hand. My story is the minor league of scary moments. The Israelites were captive in a strange land, and it seemed like there was no future and there was no hope. They were terrified. Right now, we understand fear. Some of you are paralyzed by fear. You're afraid to leave your home, or you're afraid to come to church on July 5th on our opening day. You're afraid you're going to get the coronavirus, or maybe you're just afraid for the people you love. We all face fear, but we don't have to be crippled by it. If you allow fear to keep you from doing what is right, fear wins. How do you win the victory over fear? You have a promise from God and God says, I have chosen you. So do not fear for I am with you. Remember, Israel was captive to Babylon. No doubt many of them were saying that God wasn't with them, right? God abandoned them. They were far from home, separated from everyone and everything that they love. Yet God said, I am with you. Even during captivity, I am here. What's the difference between God and idols? Well, what can idols do? Can they speak? Can they go with you through hard times? Do they have the power? The answer is no. They are useless in crisis. But God goes through the hard times with you. Now, I want you to listen to me. You are not alone. You don't have to fear because God is with you. He sees your situation. He knows us, everything that's going on. And he's right there. 
with you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Now, when you are dismayed, you no longer have confidence in what you once thought was reliable. You are knocked off your course, shaken to the core, and tempted to give up. Yet God says, do not do it. Stop. Do not quit. I am with you, for I am your God. Although his people failed to keep their covenant with him over and over, God did not abandon them. He chose them and he was not letting them go. Those words are powerful. I am your God. You belong to me. You can leave me, but it won't stop God. You can deny my power. I won't stop being your God. You can choose others. I won't stop being your God. God is not a distant, remote, disconnected, celestial being. His relationship with you is very real and personal. He is your God. Let's sing this song together.
Through these trials, you've always been faithful. And you bring healing to my soul. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. If you are weak today and helpless and trapped by an enemy, God can rescue you. How? By killing the enemy and removing them from the situation. But you are still weak and probably helpless. God does more than just rescue you. He also strengthens you. You are no longer weak and helpless. You are safe and secure, strong in your God's arms. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. The idea of God helping his people is found throughout all of Scripture. Over 200 times the word helper and help is used to identify a key biblical truth. On your own, you can do nothing, but you are not on your own. In our me-first self-sufficient society, the idea of needing a helper isn't at the top of the list. But we need it. We need the strength and the help of God. A guy was walking down the street when he fell into a hole. The walls were so steep that he couldn't get out. And a doctor passed by, and the guy shouted, Hey, can you help me out? And the doctor looks down, and he writes a prescription. He throws it down into the hole, and he moves on. A philosopher passes by, and the guy shouts, Hey, can you help me out? The philosopher wrote down a lesson on the meaning of holes in life and threw it down to him. Now a priest comes along And the guy shouts out, Father, I am down in this hole. Can you please help me? The priest wrote down a prayer and he threw it down in the hole and he moved on. Then the man's friend walked by and he shouted, Hey, Chris, it's me. I fell into this hole. Can you help me out? Chris looks down and he jumps into the hole. The guy said, What are you doing? Are you stupid? Now we're both stuck down here, and I need to be out of this hole, not you to be in the hole with me. His friend said, you know what? I've been down here before. I know the way out. Now this is the picture of Jesus, our helper. He doesn't just give you a prescription to get you through the trouble. He doesn't just give you the meaning to the situation. He doesn't just offer advice or a prayer. Jesus jumps into the hole with you to get you out. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and He dwelt among us. Jesus left heaven and He came to earth so that He could be with you to strengthen you and to help you. So do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
Now that's an incredible statement given what was going on. The Israelites were ripped from their homeland and from Jerusalem. They were captured by Babylon and facing persecution, but God's promise was that regardless of political powers, separation from home and the temple, he would strengthen and help and uphold them. During the coronavirus crisis, this is a key promise. God will uphold you with his righteous right hand. You will not be defeated or destroyed. This crisis will not last forever because God is your God and he will be with you. God is our savior. He's our victor and restorer of his people. He will uphold you with his saving hand. He will uphold you with his powerful hand. He will uphold you with his victorious hand because you have his promise. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now I want to read the next two verses. It's even more encouragement and adds to this powerful promise. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. You do not have to fear. The Lord your God is with you. Can we get an amen? God is with us. He has us in the palm of his hand. And no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance is, he has the victory. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. God, that it's an encouragement to us. God, it's the source of life. God, as the enemy wages war against us, God, that you are fighting our battles. God, you see the circumstances and the situations and the fears and the doubts and the worries. And God, you say, don't worry about it. You have the victory. We just have to sit back and watch you do what you do, which is save our lives, to deliver us from the enemy, to take care of every situation, to do miracles. And so, Lord God, we surrender our hearts. We surrender our lives. God, I don't know what situation that everybody that is facing today that is watching this video, but God, I pray that your supernatural power comes in and saves the day. God, that finances would be turned around. Relationships would be restored. God, that jobs would be secured. God, that businesses would increase. God, whatever the situation is, that it would be a miracle and it would be from you. And so, Lord God, do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God has you right in the palm of his hand and everything's going to be okay. If nobody's told you today that you are loved, know that I, Pastor Joel, love you and that you are loved here at Station Church. And we are excited that next week, July 5th, we are going to be at Station Church home together in person. So would you join us at 1030 a.m. next Sunday at Station Church? We'll see you next Sunday. Walk through deep waters. I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire. I will not be overcome Through the valley of the shadow I will not fear I am not alone I am not alone You will go before
midst of deep sorrow I see your light is breaking through The dark of night will not overtake me I am pressing into you For I am the Lord your God 
took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I call. You are my servant, and I will fight for you. Took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I call. You are my servant, and I will fight for you. Took you from the ends of 